We're getting ready to call her, so... Uh, Nikki Palomino. Yeah. Let me uh, screw this over right here. And, uh... <laughs> it's crowded in here in this little hot I box. I got my creepers right back here. from... Uh, <laughs> I got my creepers back. I had, I had to wear them. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They're from Anarchy Closet, but they were just too... I have my Anarchy Closet clothes on there. Hello, Nikki. Hi. Can you see us? Can you, see us? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, this is uh, my co-host, Dreb, right here. Hey. Hi. And my other co-host, Brandon, over here. How you doing? Hi. Nice to meet you. Glad to have you. Yeah. So how, uh, how is L.A. this evening? Hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very hot. Well, yeah, it's, it's hot right here. We turn the AC off during uh, the show, so it's not too loud. We got a wall unit here, so. Do you have, um, can you hear the AC here? No, not at all. No, he can't hear it, so. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, that's good. Cool. Do we need to do anything more as far as uh, adjusting anything? No. I think we're a lot, yeah, we're good. I'm going to check the audio levels on my end real quick. Say hello. <laughs> Say hello, Nikki. Uh, hello, Nikki. <laughs> okay. okay, we're good. Yeah, she's good. Okay, uh, yeah, we're live now. So, uh, uh, I, I, I'm five chapters into your book. Hold, here we go. Uh, I got your right. book here. Yes. And uh, I'm, it's Days: The Story of a Grunge Rocker by yourself, Nikki Palomino. Is that correct? That is correct. And. Uh, for the first time in probably 25 years, I've read that many pages in a book, so you got well, me interested. <laughs> that's good. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to having you back on and talking to you more about it, but uh, okay. Eric is quite the character. I mean, uh, yes. uh, I won't give too much away from what I've read, but um, up, up in the streets of Portland, is that pretty uh, prevalent up there? I mean, uh, what's the time frame for this? Is this 90s right now? Um. Early 90s, yes. Early 90s, probably about 91. Okay. Yeah. Um, is this kind of like, were you up there at the time when this was going on? Were you into the grunge rock scene? Or? Uh, yes, but not there. Not there. Um, I just know that um, Portland was a big, uh, kind of a big center for our music there and during that time, as well as Seattle, of course. I didn't want to put it in Seattle, so I just sort of put it in the small town in Oregon. And then, since Portland would be the biggest town close to where he lived, I then used uh, Portland okay. and just went from there. Basically, you're you know you're starting out his life, which is sort of a a, a combination of three musicians, and um, just sort of uh, stuck in there. It just seemed to work. That's great. It's a uh I definitely look forward to going into it more. Uh, Eric, uh, Eric and his, what was it, a Stratocaster he's got? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the whole, uh, I like how the, everybody knows who he is and stuff, and he's got his stages and stuff. It's, and, you know, it's pretty cool, man. I'm, well, I'm, thank you. I think, uh, you know, mostly, um, I think it's about his, well, obviously, he's 18 when we start off the story. And so I was hoping that it would be a young adult, but I got a little bit over the edge. And um, the drug problems that he has, which to me is the biggest focus, and the fact that he um, had been living on, on the streets, comes back home thinking that he's going to get it together, and he just never does, um, no matter how much people help him. And he does have a, a good group of people you know, as far as uh, Molly and and Toots and the people in the band, um, you know, but it, it's sort of the early beginnings. It's supposed to be a, a trilogy, and um, I have the second book that came out, but I had some problems with uh, my publisher. They just sort of flew the coop and left a lot of authors hanging on a limb. So the second one really never was able to, I think it was out, one night on Amazon, and that was it. So, uh, I am looking for another publisher. So, okay, ah! that's Devil Dog. Hi, Devil Dog. We got <laughs> we, we got little animal mascots here. Chime in. You know, Nikki, we've had a couple of people who have written books who have come across the same problem that you've had, and 
quick story. A friend of it ordered a hundred of his own books, I think Tony said. Yeah, a hundred. A hundred books of his own, and <laughs> the only ones were sold were the ones that he sold. Well, they sold books. Um, I didn't see the yeah. profit at all, but um, I saw some. And I think in today's publishing world, uh, you are at their mercy, and they really don't push you much. I think that you know they try as much as they can, but money is a big issue. So basically, you're stuck doing all the pushing, which I learned very quickly that that's what I had to do. And it's practically a 24/7 job, you know, just to, to push yourself, as you probably know as well. Yeah, it's uh, Brandon over here. He's uh, what your what would you, your unofficial title be? What do you what for TVHC? Yeah, uh, I guess I'm a promoter. He gets a lot of uh, bands in the Bay Area, and uh, yeah. and not only does that, he uh, he's in quite a few bands. Yeah. And uh, to me, I I, I have uh, the utmost respect for this guy's just twenty four seven. Drab same way with her record company. Uh -huh. yeah, you either records. gotta be into something and do it, or you know. Well, and, you know, again, if no one has heard of you at that particular point, you have to make sure that they have, because no matter what your product is, if they don't uh, know about you, they're not going to read it, so they're not going to know how good it is or how bad it is. And, um, I, and I find that with um, a friend of mine who's on Penguin Books, and he found that even with them, I mean, even the bigger companies are not pushing people like they used to. It is sort of wait for things to happen. And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of a drag. As you would think somebody, Penguin's owned by Random House, you would think that they would have the money to push you, but they're really not going to push you until you prove that you've got something uh, going on, like a movie, which, which he does, will, will come out. When the movie comes out, they'll push him. Well, by then, you know, <laughs> it's just, uh, it, it's an interesting time in publishing and and records and all of that. Cool. So, besides this book, you're, you're a writer? I mean, you write for magazines. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think we know, we're, we have a mutual friend in uh, one of the magazines you write for, uh, Punk yeah. Globe, correct? Yes, Punk Globe and Ginger Coyote. Uh, she was gracious enough to let me write for her. And um, it's worked out well. She's also sometimes a uh, co-host with me, or surprise host, or whatever you want to call it, special guest host, that's it. And um, so she's brought in a lot of talent, uh, a lot of people that she's known. She's been uh, very good about that. And so it seems to work. Uh, you know, she knows the business, and she knows and anyone who could last 37 years with a magazine knows what they're doing and that's one thing I can say for her. She's also a lead singer with White Trash Debutantes, right. which is, is quite actually a pretty big band. You know, when you look back at some of these bands that you didn't hear of, like the Ramones or, or Richard Hale or Jim Carroll, you start seeing that there's a lot of bands, Toilet Boys, all these people, Jane County, um, were actually quite big. So yeah. Did you happen to hang out with any of them uh, growing up? Uh, probably would be more like, um, you know, a little later into it would be, uh, you know, like Tough Darts and, uh, you know, off and on Ramones, different people that you, you know, you run across. And I wasn't necessarily close friends with anybody, but, um, you know, and then I came to L.A., so that sort of changed the scene because I was in New York City for, for a while. And mainly just starving, I guess I could say. Starving, and I worked for a magazine there, and I was in different bands, but it's a hard city to live in, but I wouldn't trade anything that I've learned there. It was just, it was an amazing time, uh, you know, in the 80s or whatever. Yeah. So. So besides uh, Punk Globe over the years, uh, would we know of any other magazines, like the one you were talking about in New York, or... Uh uh, how did you get like introduced to Ginger? I mean, well, Ginger, um, we actually had a mutual friend, Tom Pitts, who is uh, an author, and he was a punk rock musician, and um, so I saw her name on his Facebook page, 
And I thought, this is somebody I need to know. And so I messaged her. And it started like that. Oh. And, you know, and I wanted her on my show, and that's how that started. And then the other magazines, a lot of them have gone under because they were in print. Uh, most things didn't survive in the early 2000 era. I mean, they were all print. They didn't go online where she adapted her, you know, her magazine to online. A lot of them couldn't do it or didn't know how, and so they just sort of went under. I mean, um, you know, regional magazines, like in Texas, there was one called Buddy Magazine, and they covered all of what was going on in Texas, Stevie Ray Vaughan, you name it, whoever it was. And then Blast, which was very short-lived. Uh, gosh, I can't even think of all of them. But um, everyone, including publishing companies, were going under. So, um, you know, that's, I, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, well, you know, growing up in that time era, you never would have thought they would disappear. But, you know, you heard the, the rumors of the, the paperless age and stuff. And, and uh, still to this day, I, I, when we had Ginger on, I, I, I was bringing it up that, you know, you know, how does it feel to be around and good housekeeping's gone and Time Magazine's yes, gone and you're yes. still around, you know? So, that's good. Well, and, and again, you have to be adaptable to whatever goes on. You have to be able to just say, okay, I don't care whether I like it or not, i got to figure it out yeah. so that I can survive. And that's what I think Ginger did and a lot of us have had to do. Otherwise, you know, we'd be left behind too if we weren't involved in all this. And the social media, which I had no interest in, uh, you just sort of have to, you know, suddenly find your, you know, find that you're interested in it or figure it out. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Use, use it to your advantage and, uh, you know, whatever you can get out of it that's positive, that's how you got to do it, I guess. But, uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, you, uh, you do your own show. Uh, yes. Uh, that's on, uh, whatever 68 radio, correct? Yes. And that is, and, uh, that's our friend, uh, Punk Princess Lisa? Yes. That's cool. And I ended up with that. I was on an Australian station, and um, you know there were there were some problems as far as being that far away from this from the hub. And uh, Ginger actually is the one who introduced me to Lisa, and it seemed to be the perfect match. So that's who I've worked for since uh, April. Oh, good. So yeah. So you're you're just almost as new as as we are. We we started in September and. Uh, this is our 42nd show. Um, you know, anytime you have uh, sh guests and stuff, and I'd love to announce them on our page. So, uh, you know, okay. feel free to share them with us. You know. Well, this uh, last month was uh, one year on the radio. I had, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I had no intentions of it, uh, but it just sort of happened, and I'm glad it did. So, and you uh, actually broadcast out of your house? Or you have a little studio, or? Well, I have an office. Okay. Uh, <laughs> an office, and I do have mics, and I have things that helped me as far as the mics, and and a little amp thing, and uh, that sort of thing. So, yeah, it, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it's it, it's a fun thing once you get into it. Um, you know, I, I'm in the future. I'm looking to dabble in and, and spreading out and stuff. But right now, I want to master this craft or somewhat. You know, it's yeah. There's always something new that goes on here. Uh, some new snafu or something. So um, I'm learning as I go. It's like riding That's a bike. Yeah, it's all yes. you can do. <laughs> but um, so, what? When can we next expect another book? Uh, well, I'm going to talk to a couple uh, publishers about putting the day series out or handling that since I, I lost the publisher. I sort of fled and. Um, the next thing is the Underground Diaries, which I pretty much um, center around 1978 and my time in New York. I mean, I wasn't there then, but, um, you know, just about five runaways and um, what they do to survive. And they have a friend of Warhol's um, and a homeless lady and sort of changes their perspective on life. And um, I like it. I mean, it's just... You know, sort of, I like taking history and uh, bringing it to life because all of these things, I think, are, are really important not to forget. 
whether it be rock and roll, uh, you know, anything, the wars, whatever, you, you know, you want that. You want to remember. Right. Well, um, I look forward to getting you back on here, Nikki. Okay. It was really nice having you on. Um, is there anybody you wanted to say hi or anything that might be out there watching? Everybody. Anybody who has been nice enough uh, to support uh, indies of any type, um, that's who I thank. And uh, Ginger, of course. Oh, yeah. Without her, I mean, she's just introduced me to so many people. And um, That's so, how we found each yes. other. That's yeah. how we found each other, yeah. Um, I will ask you, where can we find, uh, you've got websites, uh, you want to give us your label as far as whatever, 68 Radio, how do they find you on there, um, buy, buy your first book, uh, anything like that, can you give us a website? Um, well, I do have uh, NikkiPalomino.com, it's probably not updated, but I'm in Facebook, and um I, my email, you can send me an email, nikkipalomino at yahoo.com, and I can guide you wherever you need to go. As far as buying the book, right now, I, Amazon may have a few copies of the original, but we have to wait for the next publisher. So. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to hurry up and read this book because I want these guys to read it too. So we're yeah, going to check it out. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> and then uh, we'll, we'll write some. We'll, we'll give you some good write-ups or however you do that. I, since I'm new to that game, as far as critiquing books, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will definitely guide you. Cool. That'd be awesome. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, let's do something together in the future uh, okay. with our shows and stuff. I think it'd be really cool. Um, it's it's not always nice networking with with people that are in the same type of business as we are. I wouldn't call it a business, but hobby. You know, it, it's a fun thing to do, and uh, you know, we're in it just for fun. You know, have a good time. Oh. Well, uh, again, I think it's the passion that if you got to have a passion for it, whether you're going, uh, mine is not something. Uh, the writing is not something that I couldn't do. I mean, I just I wouldn't live without it. But. Um, you gotta have passion. If you don't have passion, there's no point in doing anything. Right. So. Oh, absolutely. You gotta be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I've been been hungry. <laughs> well, Nikki Palomino, it was great having you on tonight. It was Thank nice you. to finally meet you in person. Yes, yeah. uh, very much so. Uh, yes. This is so strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, a, it's it's you know the, it's a future now. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. So, uh, well, well, thank you very much for asking me. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Have Nikki. A Looking Have, forward okay. to your book. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Nikki, Nikki Palomino, thank you. All right. Well, I'm going to... Let's see. Are we up here? There we go. We're still rolling here, so I'm going to close this. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Close this out. What come, do we got coming up next? We're going to have Steve Porter coming up, but I'm going to play some music. I'm going to close this one out, yeah, segment it, and uh, we got your, your song list up, Brandon, after this. We'll be right back. Awesome.